What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a website so that when people visit your site they will mine cryptocurrency from their browser using their CPU and send the coins directly to your wallet. All you need for this is a single HTML file and three lines of JavaScript. You really don't even need to know how to code. As long as you know how to copy and paste then this video is for you. What we're going to do is embed a JavaScript miner into our website. Now the easiest way to do that is to use a cryptocurrency mining service. There are several of them out there. Uh, there used to be one called CoinHive, which was pretty popular, although I don't think they're around anymore. For this tutorial, we're going to use WebMinePool. Now, I'm not affiliated with them. I'm just using them as an example for this video. Here you can see that I've already registered and logged in, and this is my dashboard. Now, we're going to come back to this, but for now, I want to go ahead and log out and show you how to sign up, just in case you want to follow along with me. So we'll start from Google and we will type in webmine pool one word click on their site click become a provider and the first time you'll need to register the good news is there's not going to be another form after this that you have to fill out so it doesn't take up a lot of time i've already done it so i'll go ahead and log in and the bad news is it looks like i have to do a captcha which i am terrible at Oh man, uh, traffic lights. So there's a light. Those are lights for sure. And did I miss any? Nope, nailed it. All right. If you're following along, then this CAPTCHA is going to be the hardest thing you have to do the entire tutorial. Solving a CAPTCHA these days is way more difficult than embedding a JavaScript miner. All right, back to the dashboard. Here you can see I've got a balance of 2.91704 WMC. What the heck is a WMC? Well, I assume this stands for WebMine Coin, but let's take a look at their FAQ link and their official answer for what is WMC. It's inner system currency, which you are getting from mining, which you are exchanging from Bitcoin when you withdraw. So basically, it's like chips at a casino that you later exchange for cash, except you're exchanging for Bitcoin. Uh, note that you can also mine other kinds of coins. It doesn't have to be Bitcoin. What you're doing is you're mining for their WMC, their inner system currency, and then you're exchanging it for Bitcoin or Monero or whatever you want. I assume you're probably mining Monero uh, if you're doing it from the browser. So let's go back to the dashboard. And here you can see there's actually a Bitcoin WMC exchange rate and you earn 0 0.00026936 Bitcoin per 1 million WMC. And when you want to make a withdrawal, you click on this withdrawal link. And then you need to have either a Bitcoin address or an Express Crypto ID on file, then you can request your withdrawal. To put these on file, you click on this profile link. And here you can see a space to add your Bitcoin address or your Express Crypto ID. So that's just a brief overview of the site. Now I mentioned earlier that we need an HTML file for this, so let's go ahead and create that now. I'm going to use Sublime Text. You can use any text editor you want, it doesn't matter. But it does need to be an HTML file. So let's just call this minor HTML. And we're just going to create a very simple HTML file here. Really don't need a title, let's just put in an H1 so we can see something when we open this up. And we'll say, am I mining Bitcoin? So that's what people will ask when they visit your site. All right. Um, so this is it. There's no JavaScript miner in here yet, obviously. I'm going to close this out. Let's open it up. Here it is. Am I mining Bitcoin? Our simple HTML file. This is, this is going to, this represents the website that we're going to embed our JavaScript miner in. So let's take a look at the activity monitor on my Mac. Now, um, one thing you can be sure of is if you're mining Bitcoin, then you're using a lot of CPU. Now, if you're on a Windows, I think this is the equivalent of a task manager or a resource manager. But from this activity monitor, we can see every process that's running in the foreground or the background and the amount of CPU that it's consuming. So here you can see the most intensive process I have is screen capture, which is just the QuickTime player I'm using for recording this and it's taking 26.2 CPU, nothing crazy. So next what we're gonna do is we're going to embed the JavaScript miner within this site 
and we'll look at this again after it starts to run and see the CPU usage then. So let's X out of this, let's X out of this, and let's open this HTML file again but within the text editor. Alright, now I mentioned earlier you don't even need to know how to code and I wasn't lying. You can click on documentation here, you can click on JavaScript Miner, and this is the only code you need. You can just copy and paste this. So first thing we'll do is copy this script and paste this into the head of our HTML file. Then we'll copy this script and paste it toward the bottom. You want to paste this actually at the bottom of your page. And let me clean this up real quick. But the reason you want to do that is because this miner is going to take up a lot of CPU. So if it runs before your page loads, then it might freeze up and not load the entire page. So you want to make sure the page loads before this starts to run. So uh, I'm going to add one more thing here. I'm going to add this throttle parameter. And we're going to put that right here. You don't really need to know what all of this stuff means under the hood or how it works under the hood. Uh, if you just paste it in here the way I have it, then it's going to work for you, but I'll give a brief explanation as to how this works. So in this first script, we've got our source tag. This links us to WebMind Pools library and allows us to tap into their API. So using that, we create this minor object. From this WMP object, we call the anonymous function. This anonymous function refers to the users on your website who are actually mining the cryptocurrency for you. You can create user profiles for them and track the amount of coins they mine, but if you use this anonymous function, that means you're not tracking them. So this is referring to your users, not to you. Here is where your site key goes. This is how you get paid. This basically tells the miner that the coins that are mined need to be sent to your account. So let me show you where you can find your site key. If you click on API keys, you can see you've got a site key and a private key. So we'll, we'll copy the site key here. Now you want to keep your private key private, hence the name private key. You can see mine, but I trust you guys. I'm sure you wouldn't do anything untoward with that private key. All right, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll paste our site key in between the single quotes. And next, let's look at this throttle parameter. What does this mean? Well, this means that we're only going to be using 70% of the user's CPU to mine crypto. We're preserving 30% so that they can have other processes running on their computer at the same time. Now, I tried to record this video without this throttle parameter, meaning that we were mining or we were, we were using 100% of the CPU to mine for cryptocurrency, and my computer crashed every time. It couldn't support the miner and my, uh, my QuickTime player running at the same time. So for your user's sake, it's important that you include something like this. Otherwise, they're going to have a bad user experience and they're not going to want to come back to your site. All right, so um, this, this, start, uh, this start function that we call from our miner object just starts the miner, as you might suspect. Once this executes, then we are mining for crypto. So let's save this. Now let's go ahead and let's open our website back up. This time we have the JavaScript miner embedded. And we're going to open this up and let's take a look at the activity monitor to see what happens next. So here you can see it's, uh, it's just the screen capture at 19.5. But here, what's this? Safari web content. Well, this is the website that we just opened that has the JavaScript miner in it. And you can see the CPU usage is way above anything else that's running right now. It's at 199.2. Um, this is 199.2, and we are only using 70% of my CPU to mine for crypto right now. So you can imagine how high this would be if, if we hadn't put that throttle parameter in place. Now, you want to make sure that you tell your users that you're mining cryptocurrency. Um, from their browser, or b better, I should say that they're mining cryptocurrency for you from their browser. Um, there are legitimate uses for this. This isn't really meant to be used for nefarious reasons where you, you basically crypto jack somebody's computer. It's, it's meant to be used in lieu of ads or something like that. So what you could do is you could create an opt-in button for your users and say, hey, instead of receiving ads, you can mine cryptocurrency for me while you're on the site 
and uh, and we'll call it even. You'll just mine some crypto and um, you won't have to look at ads. And if you get enough users, that's going to, um, you know, you'll, you'll eventually earn some crypto from this. So here you can see that it's still running relatively high. Uh, once we close this out, we will no longer be mining crypto. So all you need to do to stop the miner is exit out of your site or exit out of that page in particular. Um, another thing is if you leave this running long enough, you're going to you're going to hear your fan start on your computer. Your computer is going to start to get really hot. Uh, I can actually feel mine heating up right now. Um, also, things will start to lag and slow down a little bit. You'll notice that uh, when you click on something, it doesn't react right away, or when you try to type, that the letters you type don't appear right away. So, um, you know that's something that you want to be aware of in case you you stumble upon a site and you think you're actually being crypto jacked those are some of the telltale signs of that all right so let's close out of this miner and I'm gonna move it over there just so we can look at my activity monitor at the same time we close it out once I do this we should see this disappear relatively quickly anyway and uh, this CPU will go back to normal so we exit out of our miner HTML come back here and it's still there but then it just disappears it goes back to the most CPU intensive process being my QuickTime player, which is only at 22.8. So that is how that works. Now let's come back to my my uh, uh, my account here. So we can see the balance is 2.9648 WMC. We weren't mining for very long, so I doubt that's changed. Oh, but it has. It looks like it has. So in that short time, in that short time we were mining. It, uh, it went up a little bit. So now it's at 3.06031 WMC. So um, that, that, what, that didn't go up by a lot, but we weren't mining for that long either. So you can imagine uh, if you had millions of users or, or something like that, how much you could potentially earn with this. Uh, and that's pretty much the basics of this. There are additional things you can do. If you look at the documentation link and then click on this HTTP API link, You'll, you'll discover ways that you can track the amount of coins that your users are mining for you. You can track the number of hashes per second, that kind of thing. Now to use this, you're going to need to know a little bit more than the basics, but uh, it is certainly here if you decide you want to you try this out. But um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Stay hard.